Today is February 1st, and this is the Nine Energies podcast. And today we're going to have a conversation with Ben Hanewalt, Natural Energy Nine. Um, ben and I have been working together, and Ben has made some really tremendous contributions to Nine Energies and in taking care of Martin and I. One of the important uh, parts of doing the work that we do is, is actually having a healthy body and having a body that's free of pain and available as a sensor. And Ben has been a very big part of restoring my body to a place without pain and able to be more sensitive to uh, people in the work that I do. So welcome. Well, thank you. I it's really a pleasure. appreciate you being here and having this conversation with me today. So uh, tell us about your, your work. What do you call it? And what specifically do you, you know, in the general world description of what you do? My work is to restore the resilience of the body. Um, in that sense, we're really looking at efficiency. How efficient is your body in terms of its ability to handle stress, um, emotion, <clears throat> all the stressors that occur in life. Mm -hmm. um, currently, I, um, I call my practice Soma Smith. It uh, is in the lineage of structural integration, of which Rolfing is also in the lineage. And that was my training. Um, but for me, as a natural energy nine, um, I've I'm obsessed with efficiency and um, why use 10 pounds of force when you can use six ounces mm. and so I continually challenge myself to accomplish more with less and um, Dr. Rolf who created this work in the 50s It'd be interesting for you to look at her picture. I'm curious. Yeah, uh, I will. We'll have to look at her together. What you would see think. what she is. Um, yeah, like where did it come from? My first know? guess is a six, but we'll. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> well, then it, would, it might be about efficiency, but then it's not necessarily about the minimum amount of force. Um, true. And historically, Rolfing was very much known for how painful yeah. it was. Yeah. And um. Part of that, I believe, has to do with the fact that when Dr. Ralph began this work, it was held as a fact that the body can't change. It is how it is, and that's all there is to it. And so being a woman in this new field that nobody believed was possible uh -huh. took a really forceful personality mm -hmm. to be able to um, carve a new path mm -hmm. um, and so I think that overcoming the initial friction of creating a new field really required more force than it does today right she had to be very powerful very powerful and um, one of the things I found in my office is that oftentimes what makes a person most resistant to change is a belief that they can't change. Mm. And um, and so I've taken this field and I, mean, I think this is my 13th year. Before that I studied Tai Chi Chuan and that's one of the things that really got me into structural integration. Not to mention chronic pain. And <laughs> you, yourself were, you yourself were in chronic pain. Oh yeah. yeah. Early 20s every day. Mm, wow. Um, hip, low back, especially. Nothing seemed to help. Mm -hmm. Yoga, Tai Chi, stretching, chiropractic, all the things that I was doing every day. And um, from Tai Chi Chuan, which is really uh, a Taoist martial art, uh, I think that as a nine, I mean, I, I loved Taoism as a philosophy. Um, the natural forces um, and understanding, looking out into nature mm -hmm. to be able to understand inside oneself. 
is a profound concept and really balancing yourself with the natural forces of the world so that you can harness those forces rather be, than be trampled by them. Mm -hmm. um, and what I found in Tai Chi Chuan, really the essence of it is to change your body in such a way that your central pivot is pristine and so you're not knocked off balance by things you can pivot around your central axis and um, I practiced that for a long time really uh, every day lessons and different teachers and what I found is when I received structural integration is that my Tai Chi got way way better mm -hmm. Um, years of practice were equaled by a couple of hour-long sessions. I mean, it was just like that, that those tweaks in your in your, in your physical alignment allowed you to stay more on your axis? Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, a big part of the Tai Chi Chuan is partner practice. Uh, and I suspect that, um, you know, from what I know of Nine Energies, there was... That's where it started, was with martial artist exercises where you try to push each other over. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, interestingly, the, the, the root is in Aikido, and mm -hmm. O-sensei had Natural Energy 6, um, and he perfected uh, the, uh, the ability to push people over using just energy. Um, so he could do it without touching. And so he, you know, he took Aikido to a new place but a very different place than the Tai Chi. And, and it's often true that uh, when something is developed in its purest form, it's developed by a master of a particular natural energy and it truly reflects that natural energy. And Tai Chi, I think, is a true reflection of Natural Energy 9. So that you liked it and it made sense and it worked for you uh, is consistent with what, what I think about uh, Taoism and, and uh, Tai Chi, interestingly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and those conceptions, um, yeah, w were so beautiful for me, especially in my 20s, where I was looking around at industrial life and it just didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't connected, it wasn't interwoven, there wasn't the, um, the systems theory guiding it. It was all incremental and picked apart and quantified and... None of that made sense, but <laughs> Tai Chi made sense. And then uh, structural integration, following that, I've, I've used um, the Taoist martial arts to clarify the principles of structural integration. Because mm -hmm. a lot of it um, wasn't understood very well. We, I found the same thing with Nine Energies in the beginning. It was thought that it was sort of a pinpoint, but the work and the research we've been doing with you and with our community is, uh, is revealing that it's actually uh, different sets of muscles and bones, and different natural energies are using different ones. So, I mean, how have you noticed that affecting your, your structural integration work? Nine Energies specifically? Yeah. Um... I would say that I definitely have noticed differences in physiology that correlate with what I've learned from you about Nine Energies, um, which I find fascinating. Mm -hmm. I haven't taken it much further than that in mm -hmm. terms of... Um, what that means and well, how I would... with, with Martin and I, you have. Well... <laughs> <laughs> you and I play around with the energies all the time when you're working on me. <laughs> I know, because you evoke that from me. <laughs> but it's so much fun. It is. Yeah. No, I, I, I appreciate that you play with this with me because that's, you know, we're doing basically very, very state-of-the-art research Truly. into how our bodies, how our physio-spiritual, that's what I like to call it, our physio-spiritual entity, our, our physio-spiritual nature is, um, creates our reality. So the way mm -hmm. our bodies are equipped and their abilities come from the, the, the 
physiology that comes from your natural energy, and yet we are all we all have all nine in us, mm -hmm. but one has this adaptive nature um, to how you grow and, and and develop. So, for example, if you look at your body as a nine, you're very broad right across here. So we think that we've been talking about this, the top two ribs being involved. And then on the back, this ability to put the arms really far back. Will you roll your shoulders back for us? Yeah, so it's like the trapezius drops the shoulder blades down and back so they become flat on the back. And that's very specific to natural energy. Now, if you look at my body, it's not, it's not the same. I have a lift from here in the front and in the center. So each natural energy really has a diff different physiological presentation. So it'll be fun to explore more with you about what this what this means. Absolutely, I think um, humanity is probably one of the most underutilized technologies on the planet. I think so too. <laughs> and, um, Dr. Ralph once said, "She's um, not only are we not born perfect, we're not born good," <laughs> and it's really. Um, like, to fulfill the evolutionary potential of humanity requires this sort of somatic education. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you look at animals and they're on their feet within minutes. And uh, humans, it takes years to master that first thing. And in essence, we're born without functioning legs. I mean, they can do a little bit, but they can't hold our weight. We can't utilize them very well. And the whole arc of a human's life is really developing their physicality towards an evolutionary goal that I don't, I don't think we even know. Well, I, I completely agree with you. And there's also a parallel development of our spiritual nature. Absolutely. That is really, I'm, you know, it's hard to know what's driving what, right? So, you know, we come in, as you say, pretty vulnerable um, and very connected at some level to source, I think. And then as we begin to develop our motor skills and we start to look outside of ourselves for how we should be, we kind of lose that connection for about six, seven, eight years. You know, kids between zero and or one and seven or eight don't have a, you know, it's hard to see their natural energy actually. Mm -hmm. But once they, I think there's a spiritual awakening time around seven or eight, nine years mm -hmm. old, ten years old, that, that time frame that begin, as we begin puberty, essentially, the early stages, also creates an opening for our, our spiritual awareness, mm. is what I think. And then our bodies start to change, right? And so every time our bodies really start to change, we have a very specific um, set of things that's going on, both with our natural energy and our spiritual nature, so our physio-spiritual nature evolves. And then if we damage it, mm along the way, which we do because we all overdo and we, we don't pay much attention to our bodies, right? Mm -hmm. And then we need somebody like you to put us back together. Um, you know, it's like, I, I look at what you've done for me. I mean, I came to you a year and a half ago, barely able to walk, mm. barely able to walk. I had so much pain in my feet and my knees. And I was really in despair about that. And now here I am a year and a half later, and I, I can walk distances, and I'm starting to get my strength back. I'm starting to have this balance in my body that I didn't have because I had lost it from so many years of, of injury and both psychological and physical. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. You're so very welcome. <laughs> I'm still excited to keep going. It's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> it, and it does seem like um, the body keeps the score. And even things that we've forgotten are still very much present within our physicality. And um, that's what I think excites me most about the work and always has, is it's not just um, helping people ameliorate their pain. It's, that's, just, that's just a small goal. I mean... Well... The pain takes you on present. Yeah, it's really, absolutely. really hard to be you and do you when you're in pain. Oh. So that's the first thing that went away. But then I think with, with the work that we've done, just taking your point, is I'm becoming more and more me and more and, and as I evolve my ability to activate all my energies in my body, mm -hmm. that's offering a cosmic experience. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Amen. Yeah. So I, I you know, I 
Dr. Rolf was right. We are we are underutilizing our human potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So the body keeps a score. What did you mean by that? Um. You know, I think a lot of it, I think of it often as like the rings on a tree. And um, everything that that tree's ever experienced is there. If there was a fire, there's scorch marks that will be enclosed as it keeps growing. I mean, if it was struck by lightning, it will just keep growing around that, but it's still there. Mm. And um, in human physiology, I find that that is also very true. Um, I can't even tell you how many times I've been working on a place that was stuck, uh, not moving, uh, restricted, and the client's eyes open and they're like, oh, I hadn't even thought about that in 20 years. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I remember how that happened. And um, so it, it really seems like that it's um, there, just like the grooves in a record. It's just like everything is being recorded in a physical, material way. And you can feel that in somebody's body. I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually rearrange super gently. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, there's... We don't know why. The mechanisms are very unclear. One of the most interesting ideas that I've come across is actually that the fascial lattice work in your body is a liquid crystal. Um, and in that way can actually record information in a very similar way to a computer. Um, so it stores it essentially? It stores and, it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, between you and me, I'm not even sure it's uh it's just this life. Um, mm -hmm. I remember working with a very professional woman um, who I would never have thought of as having much, I don't, I don't think she spent much time thinking about spiritual things. Mm -hmm. um, and in the course of our treatments, there was a place that was very stuck and it took a long time and finally I think eight sessions in I got a little frustrated and was like okay this is gonna change and um, as we were working her eyes opened and she was like oh I was a pirate and that's where somebody stabbed me <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know uh, my husband Martin always says just don't disbelieve right yeah things can happen if you stop the stopping of of things we, we we make a choice in our western world to say that's not possible change is not possible we can't change our bodies we can't change our lives we can't and that in and of itself as you say restricts the actual happening and so being open to say oh well okay <laughs> yeah and also the unique um possibility that it, that that these memories aren't just stored in our physicality but also are reflected in our energetic bodies, mm -hmm. and that there's an interplay mm -hmm. back and forth that the that they influence each other. Yep. Um, one of my favorite quotes of Dr. Ralph, she would said once that um, that all the bodies are connected: our emotional body, our mental body, our spiritual body, our physical body. They're all connected, but the physical body is the one I can get my hands on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I actually think we can get our hands on our spiritual body through our physical body. I, I do too. Yeah. Um, and uh, I do believe that that's what she was hitting at. Yeah. She <laughs> kept all the energy <laughs> nonsense to... Uh, to a minimum. <laughs> to a minimum uh, in class. Uh -huh. But, yeah, she was... Uh, we'll definitely have to look at her. Operating uh, in multiple realms. Because, I mean, when I identify the energetic signature, the spiritual energy, the... the the of a person is is as important as the physiology so it all has to be consistent the shape mm -hmm. of the face for the nine you have to have that softness 
your neutral eyes, the quality of the eyes. even tone, mm -hmm. this breadth here. So the physicality has to be here. But also, if you don't breathe like a nine, a breath is central to people of natural energy nine, and the way they breathe is unique. It's different than, than the way other natural energies breathe. Mm. Show us how a nine breathes. If you, <sighs> yeah, so there's an up and then a drop that comes. So this, the, it, the nine breathes into the upper chest. Even, even still, I'm breathing into my mid chest as I do that. Will you do it again for me? And it really relaxes the body mm -hmm. in a way that uh, other kinds of breathing don't necessarily. Mm. I'm, I'm curious. I don't know what my natural breath might even look like. I've been uh -huh. practicing breath techniques for so many years that I'm not sure. <laughs> well, your natural breath is just what you do. <laughs> and I know you've been practicing breath techniques, but that... I expect if you look back, they the ones that you actually adopted were the ones that were most natural for you. Yeah. You know, because if you if you compare nine to four, for example, so nine breathes up, fills that upper chest, and then typically drops the shoulder blades back and down. Whereas four breathes in and down into the body, into the lower abdomen. So most of their breath is actually centered down here, where nine is centered up here, where six it's in actually in the rib cage. So each of the natural energies, when they breathe, uses a different part of the torso mm -hmm. to fill their body with the life force energy of oxygen. Mm. So, uh, so in that sense, one method, one part of the overall breath comes naturally, mm -hmm. but then we still have the potential to gain access to all the other realms. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a cool thing is, mm -hmm. is, yeah, you're born a nine and that's what's been developing in your body and I'm born a six, but I can learn to do what you do and that helps me to be more uh, relaxed, more flexible, more aware of, um, if I compare nine and six, it's like you're universally aware. And I take a little tiny box in that universe, and I work right here. So you look at me and say, "Why are you spinning around in this little tiny box?" There's way more, and I don't, I don't see it. I don't live it. Mm. You know, my world is right here in this presence and this energy. There's no more to it than right now, unless I actually can activate my nine and go, "Oh, there's more than my office. Oh, there's the house. Oh, there's Bozeman. Oh, there's the you know." So I can, I can learn to expand my awareness out beyond my little teeny little box here. And so that's how you help me. I help you by saying, okay, if we're in this universe, what are we going to do? And, and how do we start movement? Because nines can get stuck, right? Yeah. <laughs> Spin around in circles. Well, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a paradoxical need for efficiency because it's so big that if you weren't efficient, you would just lose it. <laughs> right? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, a lot of nice talking to me about how, and you have talked to me about this, about how you have to go and retreat to recover. Mm. What's that like? What's that like to go out and roll and make a change and then having, and then, and then what does that recovery do for you? Um, I think it helps to find that center pivot. Uh, I think it's pretty easy to it spread so thin, so wide, that um, um, that then making a decision or making a choice or accomplishing something just seems so big, and um, too many consequences or unintended consequences. And um, I do prefer a retreat in a natural setting. Um, cause I feel like it allows me to, it's almost like expand out into the Tao and in expanding out into that kind of a really wonderful functional system. I mean, that's, you know, that, 
that's what comes to my mind is like a meadow where there's diversity and there's all different kinds of plants and all kinds of animals that are all interwoven and all doing their their own thing and coexisting and there's synergy and the system is balanced and that brings me more peace than anything else. So that uh, that retreating actually is most useful when you can drop into the the universal oneness and into the space of of balance and harmony, and that's mm -hmm. easy, most easily found in nature. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I think I think different natural energies have really different relationships with nature. I imagine. Yeah. Uh, and and that state of oneness, uh, a friend of mine, she's a nine, she said, oneness is a natural state of being. Mm. And, you know, what I want to tell you nines is, it is for you guys. <laughs> it, it is for us, we just don't know it. Mm -hmm. So that is actually part of the function of nine, is helping us to know that we're a part of a system that's very big. And infinite, really. But... Uh, it's it's like nine knows what part of it that is knowable, mm. and where we sit in it, and what needs to be done to with the least with the most efficiency with the least amount of energy to create that harmony and balance. Mm -hmm. It's like you have you've taken on the body as your place where you do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you go out in the universe of the body and work with all of the tendons, muscles, bones, and the energy that's in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do believe that that's uh, why I have found Dr. Rell's philosophy so satisfying as a practice. And um, just that idea, you know, most body workers, if you have your shoulder hurts, you work on the shoulder. Right. You get more range of motion in the shoulder, and maybe you give strengthening exercises for the shoulder. And um, instructional integration, as Dr. Ralph would say, if it's anywhere, it's everywhere. Um, and I find a lot of enjoyment and satisfaction of finding like how the whole body's pattern has changed in such a way that the shoulder is being left in the lurch. Um, that for me is fun. Yeah. Well, for me it's fun when you work on me. It's like, oh, I didn't know. You know I was... Oh, it is. <laughs> and, and as you've worked on me, God, you know, it's uh, the spiritual stuff comes up too. Mm -hmm. I remember once being on your table. I don't know what the hell you were doing that day. But it was like every... I, I flashed through every single trauma. Mm -hmm. Every traumatic relationship. And it, it was like it went flashed in and then flashed out. Wow. And and none of those traumas, as I think back on them, have the same charge that they had. So mm -hmm. it's like there's this really amazing opportunity that in, and gift that you bring to people, as you realign the body, it it realigns the the relationship with those traumas and injuries. Mm -hmm. So it's very cool. Absolutely, <laughs> it's truly an honor to facilitate. Yeah, I understand that. I guess when I work with a person to identify their energy, it's it's also that form of aligning body, soul, spirit. And uh, it is truly an honor to work with people, mm -hmm. helping them be who they were meant to be. Absolutely. And uh, making space for them to, to achieve that human potential mm. that we have not yet touched. Yeah. What do you think for you is a nine is, I mean, you're doing amazing things. What... Uh, what is on the table for you? Um, right now, what is on the table is to take everything I've learned and, and make it available to more people. So that means teaching. Uh -huh. So what's available? For me, the next step in my process is really to um, to share what I've learned. Um, and so the challenge has been to take, you know, ideas and concepts and feelings and understandings that probably come more natural to me as a nine 
and make it available to other people, other practitioners, in a way that they can work with from their physiology yeah. type. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm pretty excited about that challenge. Uh, it, I, I have a similar challenge in, in my teaching, right? Because if I'm going to teach you to identify a person's natural energy, you're not going to do it the way I do. Yeah. You know, I basically feel people with my chest and, and get a hit of energy, and then I make sense of it with my body. And But you're not going to do it that way, right? And the same thing was like, I, I wouldn't do structural integration the way you do. Mm -hmm. And this is a challenge of, of, of any master, that uh, how do you teach what you know that comes from this part of who you are? when you know you're dealing with somebody that's not like you? And it's, a, it's an interesting question. Uh, I look forward to helping you answer it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you can help me too. Absolutely. It is, because uh, I, I think actually understanding the physiology associated with each of the natural energies is critically important in the process you're talking about. Mm -hmm. as, as, and then this ability to activate all of the energies in your body I think is another piece of it. That for me to communicate with you and you to communicate with me, if we understand a little bit more about the reality of each other, it makes it easier. Because so I have a fairly, um, I can activate the nine in my body. And so when I do that, I can feel into my body. When you're working on me, for example, I can feel you uh, connecting. If you put your hand here and you put your hand here, I can feel you connecting through my body and working with the cells of my body. But I really... Um, don't feel that as much as, unless I'm in a really nine space with you. Mm -hmm. So if I um, am in a more introverted space, I'm in a more four space where I'm inside me, I don't, I'm not even aware necessarily of you. Mm. Wow. So depending on what's going on with me changes what I'm aware of when you're working on me. So that would also probably change uh, what you're doing as you're, if, if you're teaching other people, for example. Mm. Like, so we'll have to, we'll definitely have to look at that as like as you're crafting your teaching. So how would you say this so a four would understand it or an eight would understand it? Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the things I struggle with too. It's like, oh my God, nine is so complicated. Who came up with that, you know? <laughs> I can't even describe how complicated it is. <laughs> <laughs> right, you take the basic physiology and <laughs> slap on nine, nine possibilities on top of it and then all the traumas and all the shit that happens to us. Excuse mm -hmm. me, my language. Um, it, it it's it's complex. We're complex beings. It sure is. And I'm uh, looking looking forward to getting this uh, Tai Chi class started because I think it'll be a really wonderful place to play. Yes, and I shall come and take it. Excellent. Yes, we will start that soon. Uh, we get that on the calendar today and yeah. start taking Tai Chi in Bozeman. <laughs> Uh, it's a good, good place. So um, to have Ben work on you is a miracle. And if you're lucky enough to be in Bozeman, I recommend uh, a session with Ben at any time. And now we're going to be teaching Tai Chi classes at the Nine Energy Center in Bozeman as well. Yeah. Very exciting. The Tai Chi of daily living. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I really, really look forward to continuing to explore the nature of our, our physio-spiritual nature with you. Appreciate it. Such a blessing. <laughs>